Um, Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you that you're going to speak to us. I thank you that you're going to challenge us. Father, I thank you for a word that you'll put in my belly tonight. Help me to not play with your people. Help me to speak exactly what you give me. Nothing more and nothing less. Speak to our spirit tonight, past our emotions, past our feelings, past maybe even some of our challenges or our feelings, uh, our, our, our um, distractions even. Speak to our spirit tonight. That even if something that we don't comprehend with our intellect and with our minds, Father, I pray that if our spirit grabs hold of it, then we got it. Cause our spirits to be wide open tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's work, y'all. Uh, I noticed that every time I say that I'm not going to be long, I normally go a little bit longer than what I have expected. So I'm not going to say that. And I'm just going to deliver what I believe that God has given me to deliver and run with it. John chapter five. Let's go there really quick. If y'all got y'all's Bibles, go ahead and open them up right where you are. If you normally use uh, your phones for your Bible, man, I encourage you on Wednesday nights. That's a beautiful opportunity for you to dust that thing off and pull out that paper. Yeah. Y'all pull out that hard Bible, man. We need it. I want y'all to see this in the scripture. John chapter five. Let's work. <clears throat> um, this is a familiar passage, but y'all know me. Anytime that something seems familiar, you know that I'm not just going here for familiarity's sake. You know, I'm not just going here to pull out something that we already know. Um, and even if it is a familiar passage, we are coming with new revelation. As we're constantly growing, don't be afraid to go back to familiar verses but I need you to squeeze the juice out of it and get new revelation. As I was reading this earlier today um, in John chapter five, this is the passage about the man who was healed at the pool of Bethesda, uh, the man who was waiting on the side and the angel was stirring up the water. And every time the angel stirred up the water, whoever jumped in first was healed. And then Jesus meets the man and he says, hey, do you want to be whole? Uh, do you want to be made well? And the man makes an excuse and he says, I have no man to put me in the water. And Jesus says, rise up and walk. Right. Uh, I wanted to give you a synopsis of this story, one that many of you are familiar with, but I want to pull out just a couple things that really jumped out to me as I was reading this passage um, a little bit earlier today. Some revelation that I got that I believe that is going to help us, and I believe that God has given me a word for tonight. Um, and and I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give what He gave me to speak, and then I'm gonna be off of here. In John chapter five, watch this. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called the Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. This is one of the parts I want you to pay attention to. In verse three, in these lay a great multitude, sick, blind, lame, paralyzed. I just want to make sure y'all paying attention. Somebody put in the chat the next word in my Bible says waiting. Somebody put in the chat waiting. This is important. <clears throat> this is important for what I believe that God's given me to share tonight. Somebody put in the chat, say waiting. It says a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Just stick a pin right there. I'm going to come right back to that. You have all of these blame, lame, uh, the blind, lame, paralyzed and sick waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down and at a certain time into the pool, stirred the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well. And whatever disease he had, not uh, of, of whatever disease he had. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there. This is the other part that I want to point out that really jumped off the page of me today. When Jesus in verse six, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time. He said, do you want to be healed? He said, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been already been in that condition a long time. Um. I need to speak to you tonight, and I do not use this term or phrase lightly when I say it, um, because when God speaks to me and when he gives me something to speak, um, I don't take it lightly at all. And so I say this with boldness and with clarity um, and decisiveness. For a title tonight, just briefly, I want to use the weight is 
over. The weight, the weight, W E I G H T. The weight is over. Somebody please put that in the chat to help some people out. The weight is over. W E I G H T. The weight is over. The weight is over. The weight is over. <clears throat> Watch this. In verse 3. In these lay a great multitude, sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for a moving of the water. Listen, y'all, I'm going to speak this, this one thing prophetically that I believe that God has given me to speak. And then after this, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, that might be the end of my message. We might just close the book and we'll be done for the night. Honestly, I don't know. This is what he gave me to speak and to declare over you tonight. <clears throat> it says, in these lay great multitudes, sick, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for a move of the water. For those of you who have been waiting for a move, the Spirit of God says that the move is here. That's what I heard. <clears throat> the move is here. This is what he showed me in this scripture. Oh my God, this is so good already. In these lay a great multitude of sick, people blind put that in the chat please the move is here the move is here the move is here the move is here i'm uh, listen y'all it, it ain't it ain't too often it, there are times that god uses me to speak prophetically there are times that god uses me to flow in my gifts and and it's rare that i that i say this very boldly and distinctly and i give it special attention i know this by the holy ghost let me declare over you tonight that the move is here i was reading this and this is what he spoke to me it says that they were waiting for a move of the water interesting to me that he's waiting for a move of the water and he's talking to the move himself that this man is waiting for somebody to stir up the, he's waiting for an angel to stir up the water who are the angels assigned to who did the angels respond to who are the angels serving who, who are the angels uh, 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 working for? Who sends the angels down to stir the water? Did they not come from God himself? And so now you have God wrapped in flesh, embodied in Jesus. He's sitting there talking to the move himself, but waiting on the move at the same time. This man is sitting there waiting for the angels to stir up the water, not even knowing that the thing that he's waiting for, he's having conversation with right now. How many times have you been sitting in a space when you've been waiting for God to move, not even noticing that God has been in your space the entire time? I wonder if the move, I wonder if it's not, if it's not that you're waiting for God to move, but I wonder if he's waiting for you to make up your mind that this is what you want. I wonder if, if for some of you, he's waiting for you to make up your mind that the that the that that the wellness, that the wholeness, that the healing, that the deliverance that you've been asking for is if this is what you really want, because if this is what you really desire from God, then why are you still waiting? Why are you still sitting on the sideline waiting for something to be stirred up when you're sitting there talking to the very person who sent the person to stir it up? Why, why are you sitting on the sideline? Jesus appears to him and he says. Do you want to be made well? Y'all have heard this passage before, so I can't give you no microwave serve message. I'm giving you fresh revelation tonight. He says, do you want to be made well? Before he even gets a chance to answer, this is what it says in verse six. This is the other part that God revealed to me by the spirit. He says <clears throat> in verse six, when Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already been in that condition a long time. Riddle me this. <clears throat> How is it that Jesus knew that he had been there a long time? How is it that he knew that he had been in this condition a long time? It doesn't say that Jesus had stayed there for multiple nights and that he had been watching this man over a protracted period of time. He gives no other detail as he, as why he could have known he could be he could have been there a long time. And so we're kind of left to our imagination. What is it about what Jesus sees about this man lets him know that I can tell just by looking at him that he's been there for a long time. This is a question I want you to ask yourself and this is what I want you to consider for yourself cuz I really want you to think about this. Jesus looks at this man in verse 6 and he says when Jesus saw him lying there 
and knew that he had already had been in that condition a long time. Not that he had just been lying there, but he had been in this condition a long time. I don't know about you, but in my mind, I consider, you know what, if I'm looking at somebody and, I, and, and just based off of looking at them, I can tell they've been in this condition a long time. Maybe they're sores. You know, if you're in the hospital, if you're laying in the bed and you're in a position long enough, then you'll get bed sores. You'll, 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 you'll get sores. You'll get rashes on your back, whatever you're laying for a long time. Maybe he had sores under his legs because he had been in that condition a long time. Maybe his muscles are beginning to deteriorate because he's not able to use them. He's not able to get around as he desires. What is it about how he looks on the outside? tells Jesus that he's been in this condition for a long time. Isn't it amazing that Jesus can see that other people around you sometimes can see that you've been in a condition much longer than what you should have been. And on the outside looking in, people are looking at you and saying, man, it's been this way for too long. Are you ready to change? Are you ready to come out? Are you ready to be delivered? What are you waiting for, for you to make up your mind to say, yes, I'm ready to be made well? What are you waiting for? What excuses have you been making as to why you can't get healed? Because if you're waiting for a move, Spirit of God already spoke to us prophetically and said the move of God is here. If you're waiting for God to do something, it's already been spoke prophetically that the move of God is here. Well, God, I'm just waiting for you to show up. I'm just waiting for my resources. I'm just waiting for that check. I'm just waiting for that money. I'm just waiting for you to cancel that debt. I'm just waiting for a man in my life. I'm just waiting for a woman in my life. I'm just waiting to have kids. I'm just waiting for me to pass this class. What have you been waiting for that, that represents the move of God happening in your life meanwhile Jesus is sitting there the whole time like do you want to be made well honestly and here oh my god thank you Jesus here's the good news and I'm almost done here's the good news about the matter this is not even contingent on how bad you want it I'm gonna help out a whole lot of people tonight this is good I'm gonna help a whole lot of people this is not contingent on how good you work a system this is not contingent on how much money you make. This particular passage isn't even contingent on how passionate you are, how desiring you are, how early you wake up in the morning. I've been grinding. I've been pushing. I, I, I just need I need to will this thing to happen. If you read the text, you'll find out that Jesus says, do you want to be made well? Not once in the text does it say that the man says, yes. Absolutely. Jesus, you don't know how bad I want this. Jesus, I want this so bad that I'm willing to read my Bible five hours a day. Jesus, I want this so bad that I'm willing to pray in tongues for 10 hours a day. Jesus, I want this so you just don't under. Jesus, watch me. I'm going to show you how bad I want it. I'm going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning, every single morning. This is what God shows us in this passage, that this particular healing didn't come by way of his passion, his desire or his will to be healed. Because if you keep reading, you'll find out. He says, do you want to be made well? The man doesn't say yes. He makes an excuse. He pulls up all the excuses as to why he cannot. And then Jesus follows up with his excuses in verse eight. He says, Jesus said to him, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Woo. Rise up, take up your bed and walk. This is why I said that this is good news and this is comforting. This is consoling to me. And I believe that I'll help out a whole bunch of people by saying this tonight, that it's not going to come by your works. That is not going to come by why you, what you did all the time. There are some instances when there is a move. Oh, my God. This is the move. The move of God is here. When there is a move of God, then if you want it, you can get it. If you don't want it, then you already in the mix. If you're anywhere around where the move is happening, this is what we call revival. This is something that is bigger than us. This is something greater than how much we want God, how much we want to see God come. Yes, that adds a play that plays into revival. But true revival is when the presence, when the glory of God shows up and he begins to shift and he begins to change and he begins to move. This is the difference between the presence of God and the glory of God. The presence of God, he is omnipresent. He is everywhere at all times. He fills up every space. He fills up our minds. He, he, he lives on the inside of us. But the glory of God is his manifested presence. The glory of God means that he's on the scene. This man is sitting at the water and he's like, I'm just waiting for an angel. 
I'm just I'm just waiting for a move of God. I'm just waiting for the presence of God to show up. And then the glory of God shows up. The manifested presence of God shows up. Jesus himself comes onto the scene and anything that God desires to move when his glory shows up, it moves. Whether you've been bucking the system or not, whether you've been in denial or not, whether it is something that you've been trying to conquer or get victory over or not, whether it is something that you have given that, that, that you've given over to God or is something that by his Holy Spirit, he has chosen to arrest. He asked this man, do you want to be made well? The man doesn't even answer. And he says, get up. He says, but I, I, I can tell by your response that this is something that you want. But oh, watch this. But it's been this way so long that I'm almost afraid to ask for it because I can't be let down again. That's it right there. Yep, that's it. It might only help three people, but that's it right there. That's the root right there. Jesus says, do you want to be made well? Jesus can tell just by looking at him that it's been this way for far too long. And then I believe that by the spirit, Jesus can tell even by his response. Yes, I really do want it, but I'm afraid to say that I want it because last time I put myself out there and I tried to get it, it didn't work. Last time I tried to jump in the pool, somebody beat me to it. Last time I jumped up and I was in first place, but somebody got ahead of me. Last time I tried to get up and I forgot that I didn't have muscles in my legs and I fell over on my face. Last time I embarrassed myself. Last time I failed. Last time I was denied. Last time it did not work. Last time I got my heart broken. Last time I got my feelings all twisted up and I was never able to recover. So Jesus, forgive me if I'm not able to give you an, a straight answer because honestly, I don't know if I'm ready to be healed but when the glory of God shows up all of the things that you were not able to put into words all of the things that you don't have language for the secret desires of your heart that you're not able to voice the things that you are not able to pray because God I don't have words for this I don't have language for this but I feel it on the inside I'm not able to express it because honestly I don't know how I feel and Jesus says when the glory of God shows up when a move of God is happening happening then he takes those desires that are deep on the inside that you don't know what to do with and he answers those unspoken requests he answers those prayers that you've been afraid to pray he comes through in the midnight hour when you didn't think that he could do it in a way that you never thought was possible this is what happens in a move of God when the glory of God shows up hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Man, I don't care where you are right now. You could be at work. I dare you to let out a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I thank God for miracles like this in the Bible where we don't have to strive for that miracle, where we, where we don't have to work uh, particularly in order for it to happen, where we don't have to, to, to give God our agenda and say, God, look how hard I worked to receive this miracle. Look how bad I wanted it, so I deserved it. Man, this is a perfect this is a perfect opportunity. This is the perfect example for the person who feels like they don't deserve it. This is the perfect example of God's grace being sufficient. This is the perfect example for God's mercy showing up, especially in a moment where we did not deserve it, where he specifically asked, do you want it? And we didn't even give him a straight answer. And he says, man, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway because a move is happening. Oh my God. This is what happens when a move of God it's happening. When a move of God is happening, he don't even have time for you to give him a straight answer. <sighs> That's much deeper than I hope. I hope I told y'all I told you I, it happened. It came out in the prayer. I prayed and that God would speak to your spirit tonight. Some of this stuff you might not be catching naturally. Some of this stuff you you you, you your, your spirit man is taking it. Your spirit man is eating. Your spirit man is getting filled up. And naturally, like, I don't even know what this man talking about. But spiritually, I feel something stirring up. I don't understand everything he breaking down. But spiritually, something's happening. I am talking to your spirit. Listen, there are moments when the glory of God shows up where a move of God is happening. The move is here. When the move of God is happening, where God doesn't even have time for your indecisiveness. Yeah. 
<clears throat> I ain't talking to y'all. I'm talking to me. Matter of fact, I can go ahead and turn this stream off and preach to myself for the rest of this message. There are moments where a move of God is happening, where he don't have time to sit around and wait for your response. Where, where when God speaks and he gives you an instruction or he's trying to do something supernatural in your life that he does not have time to waste. This is time sensitive. How do I know that this is time sensitive? Because the, the lame man said it himself. He said, hey, there's a window of opportunity. Every time an angel comes down and stirs, it says at a certain time. He comes down at a certain time, but that certain time is never announced. So you just have to be expecting. You have to be sensitive to the move of the angel to almost anticipate when the move is going to happen. So when the move starts happening, you can jump in. It's a window of opportunity. So then Jesus comes to him and he says, hey, this window of opportunity that you've been looking for, guess what? Even, oh my God, this is spiritual. Y'all need to turn on your spiritual antennas for this one. He says, the thing that you have been waiting for to happen, <clears throat> you've been waiting for the angel to stir it up. And naturally you missed your moment. Naturally you missed your window, but you have to understand that when a move of God is happening, that he's able to, oh, oh my God, he's able to open up doors that were closed. He's able to redeem time that has been stolen away. He is, he's able to restore what has been lost. He's able to open up windows of opportunity that you thought had been sealed shut for things that were only a window of opportunity that were very time sensitive when a move of God is happening when his glory shows up there's something that needs to happen in that moment that could not have happened in any other moments yes he may have missed the window for the angel to seal it up but his glory his presence his physical presence being in that space occupied he was able to open up a spiritual portal that nobody else can open. And in that moment, he needed a quick response. There was no time for him to be indecisive. There was no time for him to be on the fence. There was no time for him to wonder, well, I don't know what people are going to think about this. What are people going to say? What are they going to think about me? Well, I'm going to have to relearn how to walk. I'm going to have to go to therapy. I'm going to have to go to counseling. What am I going to have? What, what, what will, what's going to happen? He had no time to be indecisive. Essentially, Jesus said, get up and walk. Why? Let me tie all this together so I can finish. Why? 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 <clears throat> Jesus produces this miracle. And then after he produces it, the Jews, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they're upset because he does this miracle on the Sabbath, which you're not supposed to be working on the Sabbath. He tells this man, take up your bed and walk. Right. He takes up his bed and walk and they see him and they say, wait, why is this man working? Why is he carrying a bed? Why is he moving on the Sabbath? They get upset. Jesus disappears. He comes back on the scene and then he announces this is this is the whole purpose of this healing. This is the whole purpose of why this man did not have to work for this particular healing. It all has a greater purpose. You'll have to see this in context. The reason that God healed them, I believe, um, 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 and, and he did not have to work for this one is because it was a bigger picture. When God's glory shows up, it ain't about you. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. Just be patient with me. I'm going to show it to you. When the glory of God shows up, it ain't about you. There are moments where um, um, there was a man, there was a boy that was born blind. And they said, who sinned that this man was born blind? And he said, nobody sinned. This was done so that the glory of God could be revealed. Right. So you would imagine that this man that was born lame. That maybe that, that maybe he had been lame all of this time so that the glory of God would be revealed. But that's not what Jesus said to him. Matter of fact, later in the passage, he said, go and sin no more, which almost implies that maybe his sin kind of got in the way of his healing, right? So why would Jesus choose to heal a man that had sin? Y'all got to go back and read this. This is all biblical. It's, it's, it's in there. Why would Jesus go and heal a man who was currently in sin? Why would Jesus go heal a man who he asked, do you want to be made whole? But he didn't even answer, right? Why would Jesus still choose to live a man that was in sin that maybe didn't even give him a straight answer as to whether or not he wanted to be healed or not. And this is what I believe. If you keep reading, you'll find out that 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 right after this happens in the verses to follow, it's almost all read. It's all read for another almost 30 verses. 30 verses after that is almost all read letters where Jesus uses this as an opportunity. Now that he has a platform. Oh, my God, this is so good. They came because they were offended. 
But now that he has their attention, he uses this platform as an opportunity to say, guess what? If you've seen God, you've seen me. He compares himself to God. Now they're really offended. It says that now they were ready to kill him all the more. And after they get ready, now that they're ready to kill him, he doesn't back down, but he talks a little bit more. That's when he goes on to share even more about life and judgment, where he goes on to talk about everlasting life, where he goes on to talk about, and, 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 and even those who are in the graves will hear the voice of God and will rise on this day. And those without sin, right, will be judged and enter into heaven. And those who have lived the evil life will be condemned. He goes on to give them this lesson. What am I saying? Pastor Ty, what are, you, what, what are you talking about? You had me, but then you went off somewhere else. The whole point of him producing this miracle in somebody who didn't even say that they wanted it particularly and somebody who had sin in their lives at the moment that they got healed. Right. Why did Jesus still do it? Because this was a platform for him to get the glory. This was an opportunity where all the critics were looking. He had everybody's attention. Why would Jesus do this to a sinner? Why would he let him walk? Why would he walk on the Sabbath where everybody has their, his, where every, where he has everyone's attention. Now he uses this as an opportunity to witness when there is a move of God happening and the glory of God shows up. Y'all listen to me intently. When the glory of God shows up, anything can happen. Nothing is off limits. I don't care how much you thought you knew the Bible. I don't care how well you think you know God. It, 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 it can be it can be somebody who walks in off the church who just got done selling their body on the street and God can make them holy right there on the spot. I don't want to mess up nobody's theology. It could be somebody that walks in with a cigarette in their mouth and already got plans to get high off of the weed that they got in their back pocket and they can have it right there in the seats, sitting there in the sanctuary. And when the glory of God shows up, I've seen it happen with my very own eyes for people to bring packs of weed and sit them on the altar and get delivered right on the spot. I've seen it with my very eyes for people to walk in with their bandana bandanas hanging off of their hip, but then later their colors on the stage. I've been in rooms where I've seen people delivered right there on the spot. I've been in spaces where I've seen people with syringes and needles and come and lay them down at the altar. Something incredible happens when the glory of God shows up, when a move of God is here. Anything is possible. Nothing is impossible. Anything can happen in a move of God. And I'm here to declare over you as I finish with this prophetic phrase and this utterance that I started with. I'll end with the same. The move of God is here. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for stirring up your people. Father, I thank you because this this means a lot to me, Lord. I thank you that you have not just used me to declare this word over your people, God, but I thank you that just as you're using me to minister to your people, God, that you're ministering to me at the same time. I thank you for the move of God that it is here, that the things that we have been waiting for, believing for, expecting, anticipating. Father, I thank you that our expectation is on major alert. It's on high alert, God. We are looking like the man who was begging outside the temple and look at Peter and John with anticipation, looking on them with faith to believe and receive. And they said, man, get up and walk. And his ankles and his legs begin to receive strength. I thank you, God, that, that our expectation our, anticipata our anticipation, our faith is growing tonight at an all-time high to the extent that we will see the manifestation of your miracles and of your promises in our lives. Even things that we are scared to profess and admit and to declare. Father, I thank you that in this move and in your glory, hallelujah, God, that you'll do things that you'll honor desires deep within that you'll give us language, Father, that you'll give us a voice. Father, speak to those things deep on the inside that maybe we've not acknowledged in years. Father, I thank you that you're resurrecting dead dreams in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for dreams that have been deferred, that, is, that they are receiving hope tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for what has been destroyed and eaten away by the canker worm and the palmer worm. God, that you are choosing for such a time as this to redeem, not because we've been so good, not because we've pressed so hard, not because we're doing things all the right ways, God, but I thank you for your glory, that you desire to get the glory. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for speaking to us and declaring your word. Father, I thank you for miracles, for signs, for wonders. I thank you for praise reports and testimonies. Father, that they'll begin pouring in from the left, the right, from north, from the south. God, I thank you that nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. We are in great expectation for the things that have already begun. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Woo! I ain't want to scream in y'all's ear just now. <clears throat> Listen, if you're on the stream tonight and you need Jesus Christ, maybe you're one of those people, just like some of the people that I witnessed in, in services in previous years. You're one of those people that stumbled in here tonight and you say, Pastor Ty, look, man, <clears throat> I ain't right. I'm not right. Um, maybe I'm willing to admit I got some sin or maybe it really ain't that deep. Maybe, maybe I, I, I just want to be, I, I want to be better. I need Jesus, whatever that looks like. You say, I need Jesus, whether it's the first time you're receiving him, acknowledging him or the 53rd time I need Jesus. I want you to put it in the chat so I can pray with you tonight. If you're on this chat tonight and you say, Pastor Ty, um, I need a church. I need a pastor. I need I need a first lady. I need teaching like this on a regular basis so that I can live not 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 just exist, but that I can truly live a victorious life. I need this. You want to be part of this ministry. You could jump in. I just want you to put it in the chat. I'm going to pray for you. I see you. I just want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for you tonight. I ain't going to take long either. We're not going to waste any time. I just want to pray for you. I see you in the chat. Ain't nothing to be ashamed about. Thank you for being bold in that decision. Needing Jesus, whatever it is, if you want to, if you're looking for a church home, I want to pray for you tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Man, God been talking to us tonight. Man, God has been talking to us tonight. I'm going to get ready to pray. I just want to give you one more moment to jump in the chat if that's you. I want to give you one more moment so we can pray for you tonight. I always encourage y'all. Man, the message has gone forth. But don't be so quick to jump off the chat. Because I've noticed, man, anytime God can speak at any moment, however he desires to speak, I want to pray for you. And some of you on here tonight, man, I, I, even wherever you are, I just want you to intercede even for those who need it. Glory to God. I want to pray for you. Yep, I see you. Yep, that's good. Yep, stand with him. I see you. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you. <clears throat> I thank you, Lord, for those who have put it in the chat. I see you in there. I need Jesus. Three words that can change their entire lives. I have no power in and of myself, Lord, to make uh, the transformation that needs to happen. Lord, but I thank you that you hold all power and all glory in your hands. You have a people who are hungry for you. You have a people who may not be perfect, Father, but they desire to be perfected. You have a people, and I'm not just talking about y'all. I'm talking about my, I include myself with you. I need Jesus. I partner with you tonight. I need, just as much as you need him, I need him too. And just because you put it in the chat don't mean that you're wrong or don't mean that your life is messy. I, I'm, I include myself with you. I need Jesus. Father, I thank you for us. Not them. I thank you for us. We need you tonight, Lord. We need you tonight in many different ways. Father, whether it's a situation that needs to be changed. Father, whether it's a heart transplant. Father, whether it's a judgment that needs to be overturned. Whether it is something mental, God, where, where, where their minds need to be transformed by the renewing of their minds. Father, maybe it's something physical going on in their bodies. Father, maybe it's just as simple as a decision to make you Lord of their lives, Father. And they, they, they want to commit their lives to you, Father. Whatever it is, Father. If it's a broken heart, God, I pray that you're mending. If it's unforgiveness, if it's bitterness, Father, I pray that you're restoring in the name of Jesus. If it's hurt, if it's pain, if it's agony, if it's resentment, Father, I thank you that you know every need. We need you, Jesus. Thank you that you're able to meet every need. You see them. Father, I pray that you honor their boldness even by putting it in the chat. 
and that we have a body of believers and prayer warriors and intercessors. I know even right now that are interceding and praying on their behalf, some of them may be even responding or replying to them directly in the chat to encourage them, to let them know they're not alone. We need Jesus too. I thank you, Lord, for the remission of our sins, for forgiveness. We receive you as our Lord, not just our Savior, as our Lord. You have dominion over our lives, Lord. We believe that you died for our sins. We believe that you rose from the dead. And the power that you now have as a result of you resurrecting your life from the, uh, from the grave, we have that same power. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Glory to God. And I thank all of you, uh, even for praying, those of you who put it in the chat um, or those of you who don't have it in the chat. But I know that y'all praying for them even now. We we stand with you. We include ourselves in that. All of us need Jesus. All of us need him. But specifically, I thank y'all for being bold in that declaration in the chat tonight. Um, and I believe um, I believe that whatever you had need of, that you got it tonight. Um, and I also encourage you, if anybody is on the stream tonight, and you say, hey, I have an unspoken request. I got something that is a little confidential, a little private. Please feel free to DM, inbox, or email us, uh, info at flowinglife.org. Um, find a way to get in touch with us at Flowing Life um, on Facebook or IG, however you can. We would love to hear from you, and we would love to take the time to pray with you and encourage you as well if there's anything else additionally that you need. Um, and so I thank God for you. Man, listen. I got to get off of here. I did not plan on being on, on here this long, but I don't regret any minute of it. Um, if you know anybody who would benefit from this message, I encourage you to uh, to share this, to tag somebody, um, because I know this ain't just for us. This prophetic word that I believe that God has given me tonight, um, I know that it is for flowing life. I can't speak for a lot of other ministries. I can't speak for complete strangers or, or people that you know, just jump on and, 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 and are not locked in. I, but I know, I, I know what I believe that God has spoken to me, um, this evening. And I know that the move is here. Um, and so tap in, man, share it, encourage somebody, challenge somebody, push somebody, invite somebody with you to church. Um, because I believe that something is absolutely stirring. I ain't talking about an angel of the Lord stirring the water. I'm talking about the manifested presence of God stirring up things that could not, would not be stirred otherwise. Ah, I'll say this last thing and we get ready to finish um, tonight. Um, if, um, y'all just, man, just, be in high expectation and anticipation. Listen, don't, 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 don't dare walk away from a message like this and just go back to the same. I'm, I'm almost finished. I'm ending, but do not go back to the same. Uh, something similar to, I, that I told Miss Marjorie. By the way, awesome job this past Sunday um, with the message entitled "Who Are You?" If if any of y'all missed it, please go back to YouTube and check it out. Um, great job. Um, this past Sunday, pushing the word, Miss Marjorie. Um, one thing that I share with her is to go back and check some of those areas that have been denied and that have not been working, that have been declined, um, that have that have that have not been responding. Um, go back and check some of those areas, because when a move of God is happening, when things are being stirred. When the glory of God shows up, something shifts, right? I, I, I completely believe, I'm trying my best to end, but I completely believe that even, you see the man got healed even before he gave Jesus a straight answer. Um, I believe that things happen when the glory of God shows up. And even if, I believe, I absolutely believe that even if Jesus would not have told him to get up and walk, even if Jesus would have just uh, waved his hand or just his presence there, I believe at some point that man still would have got up. At some point he would have realized, wait a minute, I got ligaments and muscles that I ain't had before. Wait a minute, now when I jump up to go move, 
hold on. My body is able to be supported by my leg. I believe that something happens every time the presence of God shows up. What I'm challenging y'all to do, this is what I'm challenging you to do, is to go back and check those areas. Go back and check, man. When the presence of God shows up, something shifts. Go back and check all of those areas. Check and find out what shifted. And we would love to hear the testimonies of those things as they come in. Ah! Man, y'all keep that expectation up for Sunday. Look forward to seeing y'all Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Even if you are not in the city, we'd love to see you online. Or even if you want to be part of our virtual family to stay locked in and plugged in uh, to the flow, you can be part of our flow and life family as well. Um, but y'all, y'all keep that faith on high, that anticipation on high. Um, and come Sunday expecting, stirred up, and ready for a great move of God. Let's pray and let's finish. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for loving on us. Thank you for challenging us. Thank you for speaking to our spirit. We know that, we, that you can maybe give us something to tickle our ears and to make us feel good, God. But I thank you for speaking past our emotions, our feelings, our intellect. Thank you for speaking to our spirit so that even in moments where we forget it, our spirit man can rise up. Even in moments where we don't have a straight answer for you, our spirit man can identify with what's coming out of your mouth. God, I thank you for stirring us up in the spirit. Our faith is on high. We're looking for you. We're anticipating you. Somebody, maybe even before you go to sleep tonight, you're looking for him. You're looking for him, anticipating. Some of you will wake up tomorrow morning with something that shifted. Go looking for it. God, I thank you for that our faith is on high. Have your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Y'all have a great evening. Hope to see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. in person so that we can wrap our hands around you and love on you and hug you. Or if you're streaming online, you family too. We're going to love on you uh, even as we stream virtually.